Hello fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the book quester. Today I'll introduce you to this almighty book. Long Barrel Series Book 1, Potkin One Ear, by Kiran Lawwood. So, 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 what do you think this little guy in the cover page is? If you look from far, I actually saw the main characters were dwarves or some kind of magical leprechauns or something. Look closer, even closer, and you can tell that he is a rabbit. But you can tell that he has only one ear. And thus, his name is Potkin One Ear. And this is the amazing tale of a rabbit. So this book is has no humans in it, and it's all about rabbits. All the main characters are rabbits, and so and so. Their their little underground towns are called Warrens, and that's where they live. And yep, that's where they live. And each Warren, each town has each has a chieftain, the ruler. Of the of the Raren who takes care of things and is kind of like a king, and and Popkin was lived in Mumberry Warren. This whole book is actually a bard, a rabbit storyteller coming at Bramblemas Eve, which is I think is kind of like Christmas Eve for the rabbits, I guess. And he he visits a Warren. And there he is telling us the story of Popkin one year to a group of little rabbits. And as the later the story would reveal, the bard is not who you see who he seems to be, a normal wandering bard, but someone far more important. And so the bard tells the story of Popkin one year. Potkin one year lived in Mumbury Warren. The story starts with that, and he was the prince. He was the next chieftain. He would be the next king. He was the great Lopkin's son, and Lopkin was a broadsword wielding, mighty, invincible-looking rabbit warrior, and he was the mighty father. Of Potkin and the chieftain of Moonberry Warren, until that day, until the fateful day when the Gorm came. His father, always was actually invisible, invincible. Um, as you don't know what the Gorm, who the Gorm are, and I'll tell you. You see, in this book, there is a myth, the myth of. The goddesses of life and death, finding this world that they are currently living in, covered in living, writhing, living metal, and the whole thing was alive. It's just throbbing. It was a very evil thing, and so the goddesses gambled for that world, and the gamble turned out to be a tie. So they made the balance. The Grammar Latch, the Lord of Iron, would stay underground, and the Goddess of Life and Death would stay above ground, and that was the balance, and it was not to be disturbed until one day, it was. Sandy Well was a normal. Sandy Well was a very normal wagon, or warren, but then one day they were making a new. New long barrow, a、uh, a long ext extension, and then when they dug and dug and dug, they found a strand of metal, a strand of grimlock, and it whispered secrets to them. It addicted them. It made them into the gorm. These these rabbits weren't even rabbits anymore. They were pierced and covered in metal armor that was more like a part of. The rabbit itself, and that was quite evil. And such and such, the Gorm was trying to destroy twelve gifts of 
from the goddess, from the goddesses, which uh, which has been given to the original twelve warrens. That uh, that was that was on the only thing that was keeping the balance stable, and those things the gorms are out to destroy. And Mumberry was one of the original warrens, which meant they were a target. So one bramble must eve, just like the day that the bard was telling the the little rabbit, the gorm came in and they killed the. Lopkin, the chieftain, killed all the guards, raided the place, looking for the magical gift of, from the goddess. And uh, Lopkin, Potkin's father, actually pretended a mighty broad silver broadsword was his mighty gift. But it was, it was actually a simple copper dagger named Starclaw. It could slice anything but metal. So, so Star Claw is a small dagger that could cut anything except metal, as I mentioned. And and when the Gorm invaded, a Popkin and Paz, Paz was his sister, um, and the Pook, his little brother, who's like very young, and well, mutters rubbish and stuff like that. And so they, those three, are made to escape through a secret passageway. Then they go to Redwater, uh, a little, uh, another warren that where they ask for help. But this is where um, they they find out that the whole place had been actually been already been raided by the Gorm, and the whole place was being controlled and enslaved by the Gorm. So they need to make their escape. But then when they were going out, an iron gate clip clipped Popkin's ear. And they had no choice but to cut the ear that was snagged in the gate. Shing! Like that. And whoa, that must have hurt a lot. And they ran away. They ran away until they came to a witch's house. Oh, the, a witch that worked for the goddess and did magic and all that cool stuff. And was a good guy, so that's what matters. And so they stayed there for a while and she said, Bridget, the witch... The the rabbit witch or whatever she she said that she, they had to go to Bone Root and perhaps find some mercenaries, mercenaries, cell swords, cell swords is another word for mercenaries, and and to make them protect them till they go over the mountains where the gorm hasn't been yet. That is what they plan to do, and but then when 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 they went to Bonewood itself, it was very crowded and it was mostly like fair. And there, Popkin, Paz, and Pook are captured by these people, but no, by these rabbits, shaped quints, who make them um, steal stuff from the other people. And they're basically very evil, child abusing people. But then, Popkin has this brilliant idea, and he gambles at Foxpaw, with Foxpaw, with the near neighboring, with the near, um, neighbor kids or whatever. And Pook has the touch of the godness or whatever, so they can gamble and they win every time. And they, and they get, they get all the money and they try to get a sell sword. But then, but then, but then, the thing is, Popkin was a prince. He was a prince, so he just asked for it, and they would just give it to him. So he didn't know the currency, and he didn't know if, for example, a cent could buy a house or could buy him nothing. So, basically, he didn't know the currency, and he didn't know how much the money cost. And so he went to the soul swords, hoping for the best. But then it was like a puny amount. It was like saying, hey, two, this is two cents. Can I buy a house? It was almost like that, except he was trying to hire mercenaries. They managed to hire one mercenary named Crom for the rest of the afternoon, who was also blind, which is sad. And Crom was actually pretty good at fighting, and he beat Shape and Quince. And, they, and so the group escapes and they, it is revealed that Crom was actually an old friend of Potkin's father 
which meant that he would protect them since he, they were old friends and he wanted to protect Popkin, who was Lopkin's son. And Lopkin was a very good and old friend. They escaped to this place named Dark Hollow. It is a warren that's abandoned and quite unknown. And there, they, they, they have peaceful days for a while, and Popkin actually does some training. I never mentioned this before, but he was a spoiled little brat. He didn't pay for anything he bought, and he skipped all the lessons for sword fighting, and such and such. He never, he didn't even know how to read, and he, he, he hid in cubbies so that he could um, skip all his lessons. And that was the spoiled little Popkin. But then this time, Trom teached him. And pretty much she was not bad at sword fighting, but not good either. And then they find out that the Gorm has their mother and their aunt trapped in their camp. So she goes there, fights the Gorm, and rescues their mother their mother their mother and aunt this is where or this is the gorm camp that's potkin obviously was the was the um clipped ear and that's crom the blind warrior that's um that's that's paz and they're they're looking uh, they're looking at a gorm camp currently and they go inside and with the help of bridget the 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 witch that wants to fight for the balance helps them and they manage to defeat the upcoming Gorm and and the book ends with revealing that the bard is I can't tell you that part though anyway it's a very good rabbity book and I really do wonder if rabbits think like that. I mean, I, I never thought about how rabbits would think and how, how would they make their towns if they could talk and they were more socialized. And I, I've never wondered what a real rabbit's war would look like. I mean, like in the nature. Maybe they have little stools and chairs or something. And, as I said multiple times, it is a thrilling read that will make your palms sweat. And like always, your book quester earn the book quester.